welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where you'll find help and hope for your divorce survival and recovery. Divorce well, live well. Hello and welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where we come to you each week with more information that you need as you go through your divorce. I like to call it help as you divorce and hope as you're starting over stronger because there's just so much to think about as you're going through that process. And today we've got a little bit of a different angle. I work exclusively with women and Today, I'm actually bringing a woman on the show who works exclusively with men going through the exact same process. She calls herself a men's love and health coach. Her name is Nancy Benitez, and she is going to talk just for a moment here about herself and kind of introduce herself real quick, and then we'll get started. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's such an honor to be able to speak to women, you know, after always speaking to men. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So just really quickly, my passion is working with men um, so that I can help them discover the value that they add to a relationship and really come from a place of understanding us women, because that is where the miscommunication is happening. You know, the communication isn't happening. And so I, I guess I'm like the conduit or the bridge that bridges both of these beautiful, you know, feminine and divine, you know, or <laughs> divine masculine and divine feminine together. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's the, and that's, I'm glad that you pointed that out because that's exactly what my goal is here today, because I usually work with women. Mm-hmm. I thought what a great idea to give them a perspective of what's going on inside of his head. And this is good, not only for your ex, but also for, you know, your friends that are male who you might be talking with about their relationships, or if you're beginning to date again, what might be going in going on in the mind of these men that you're going out on dates with. It's, yeah. it's really great to understand because there are so many differences. So, yeah. you know, we don't have a specific script here today, but Nancy and I had a great conversation a few weeks ago and, and we've got just some different ways that we want to look at this and just kind of explore. So if you don't mind, Nancy, I'll just have you start by telling us a little bit about your structure as far as when you meet a new client um, as a male, he comes to you looking for what and what are some of the main things that you work on with them? Yeah. So when the, usually the men, you know, that I work with are, you know, single, they've either been divorced, um, you know, and they're looking for a relationship. They're not just trying to mess around or, you know, Mm -hmm. sleep around. They're looking for their perfect woman to live a life with. And so the way my program works is the first thing we we work on is the man, the actual, their, their healing, their personal growth. You know, these are men that, that have done some of the men's work, so to speak, but in doing the men's work, you're not really tapping into the feminine, right? It's like you're with men, you know, men are giving you advice, but it's not coming from the feminine. So what we do is we work on those old wounds and, Mm -hmm. you know, those, those old stories that keep replaying about women, about relationships in the past, things like that. So we really work on all their issues, so to speak, Mm -hmm. um, so that they can show up as better men in better relationships. And then we move on to understanding us women and how to cultivate a better relationship. So I like to say it's kind of unlocking the feminine secrets. You know, I give them because I am a woman, you know, they can ask me anything. You know, I have no filter. Like if they want to ask me about sex, if they want to ask me any question, you know, I am, I'm really comfortable with talking about it. And so then they get a woman's perspective. Uh, We move into the the health piece because I'm also, you know, I'm into nutrition. And so we help them feel better and more confident in their bodies. We get them better in shape, learn how to eat, you know, things like that so that they don't have performance issues, you know, because that comes from their heart, like physically from their heart. And so I Uh teach them simple ways where they can learn to eat better so they show up better you know, and, and are a better able to perform, you know, have more energy to do all the things that this woman they want to be with loves to do, you know, things mm-hmm. they love to do together. And so it's really a beautiful, it's like a marriage, right, of all these beautiful things that help form this healed, you know, awakened, so to speak, man. So he shows up better for 
Mm -hmm. the, you know, the women that are out there dating as well, you know, and of course they're going to attract that same type of woman. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate just having that kind of as a foundation for what we're going to talk about today. And so I thought, you know, probably the hardest part for a woman going through a divorce um, with regard to understanding men is dealing with the ex, right? So not that we necessarily need to spend a lot of time on understanding the ex as we're going through divorce, because (laughs) maybe we've kind of given up on that, you know? And rightfully so. We don't need to invest a lot of mental and emotional energy into him anymore. But what do you think might be just maybe a few tips to offer women with regard to your understanding of men as they're going through divorce, what she might do or how she might look at the situation to kind of just lessen some of that anxiety and that tension? So I'm, you know... I'm a huge, so, okay, I don't know if I shared this this with you. I was in a relationship for 18 years and that ended, you know, in divorce. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a daughter and, you know, the number one thing that helped me personally, you know, as a woman who, and I was the one that left because, you know, there were certain things, non-negotiables, boundaries that had been crossed. And so I was no longer willing to stay in the relationship. And what helped me the most was focusing, you know, you're separated now and focusing on me, focusing on what I wanted, focusing on what made me happy because, you know, us women, we give so much, we give everything and leave sometimes little to nothing of our own selves for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so when I began really looking at myself and healing those parts of myself that were really wounded and coming into self-reflection and then just doing fun stuff that I love to do that I put on hold forever because I was married or because I had a kid or because I was the mom and the wife and the blah, 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 you know, Mm -hmm. um, was number one, I think is take care of yourself now. Like, you know, you've left, you still have your kids, but find the time to take care of you. You're depleted. Mm -hmm. You know, you've left because now you're depleted or they, I don't know, whatever the situation is, we're depleted. And now it's time to fill ourselves and fill our cup, Mm -hmm. you know, and really also heal, do the healing. Like that's the past, leave it, you know, you're going through it, but now you're moving into a new place, you know, look at it as as a new opportunity, right? It's a new opportunity to start over, to not get back into another relationship right away you know, Mm -hmm. which men and women do, especially men, you know, they jump into a relationship because they're hurt. They just want to rebound or or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just want to feel better. No. Yeah. I mean, maybe the the sex feels better for a little bit, but. Or the attention, even if they don't do that, they just want to feel better. They want to stop the pain. I mean, who doesn't, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's a great place to start because I think self-care is way underdone for most people, especially during divorce, because you need more of it than you did before. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, that's a broad term and it can mean a lot of things. But if you're coming from a place where you're really taking care of yourself well, it allows you to execute what you need to in your divorce without being erratic emotionally or as much so. And so one, one thing that I just came to mind and I'm glad it did is because, because it's something that I see in every woman Mm -hmm. and I think it might be helpful just to think about it from a perspective of, you know, you understanding the male uh, role in all of this. And so talk a little bit about gray rock. I don't know if you know what I mean when I say that, but I'm going to explain it. Uh, the gray rock method is a form of communication that you use with a highly con- a high conflict personality type. So when you're going through a divorce and you're divorcing someone who has narcissistic tendencies or just toxic traits, they'd love to argue. They love to get you emotionally baited and drawn into an argument with them. Um, When you have somebody like that, really the only way to successfully handle your own emotions as you go through this divorce is to turn that off. And the way the gray rock method describes for doing that is to just think of it like being a boring gray rock laying on the ground. No matter what he does, 
you don't react. You offer one word responses, very factual information. You deal only with the subjects of children and those which you have to talk about because of the divorce. And maybe you only communicate through your attorneys if it's a contested situation. And it's really honestly surprising to me, although I did it too for a while, how few women will set that kind of boundary in their life. They will stay in that toxic argumentative cycle with their ex, even as they're They've already decided to end the relationship, and yet they're still getting sucked into that. So if you don't mind, offer just a little bit of perspective about how taking that kind of a perspective with communication might help with dealing with your ex as you divorce. Yeah, and it's funny. I didn't know it was called that, but (laughs) thank you for explaining that. Yeah. You know, and okay, so when you're in an argument, you know, feeling bad is addictive, there's the cortisol that comes in, you know, you get, get addicted to feeling bad. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's really hard to break that cycle, but when you do, and you go from a place of, like you said, being that gray rock and really it's, it's about centering yourself. So Mm -hmm. I think the way it begins, you know, say, say there's this couple and they've been going at it. They've been going at it since they were married, you know, for years. And now they're really going at it because they're getting divorced and they're like, F you, like what, you know, this, the, the guy's totally just stuck on himself and, you know, she's depleted. I think, again, the best way is to find a practice that, when you're at home, you know, say, for instance, play really loud music and find a practice, you know, with somebody yelling, maybe some heavy metal or something and sit down and start a breathing technique, you know, really start to breathing and really find a way that calms you down so that when you're in that situation, when, you know, that toxicity is coming at you, it's almost like you have this beautiful aura of like, like bouncing back and forth, you know, and not letting it get to you because the peace feels so much better than the toxicity and engaging in that, right? It takes mm-hmm. two to argue. Yeah. And so for me, you know, what, the things I work with on, with my guys is gratitude, a lot of gratitude, a lot of meditation, um, visualizations, you know, even a gratitude journal, you know, maybe she could sit while she's sitting there and just write words, you know, of peace, like that bring her peace or have an image in her head that brings her some peace into her heart. So she's coming from that place Mm -hmm. and she can command the room. If she gets to a place where she finds a meditation practice or a breathing practice, she, her, her presence alone will calm everyone down. That's how much power we have as women and men have it too. But I mean, we're women, we're intuitive. We, we have so much heart. We come from a place of nourishment and, you know, we, we usually raise our children and and have so much more than men are given, you know? And so if you can, if the women listening can find a place of peace during that time, whatever that practice looks like, Mm -hmm. you guys can command the room. You are that powerful. You know, you don't have to engage in that. And that there's a lot of that kind of recovery that needs to happen and that maybe even is happening simultaneously, especially if she's working with a coach during that time, mm-hmm. to learn to own your personhood and to find your voice, to f- learn boundaries, to just gain some empowerment mm-hmm. that she maybe has never had or has certainly lost over the years of conflict. And so that's definitely not an easy task but an important one. And so I just kind of wanted to address that. Um, Can you think of anything else that we should mention as far as what to expect from your ex when you're going through a divorce? Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's just such a simple question, right? (laughs) Um, You know, they, they, they go into depression. Um, Like suicide is definitely a factor in their minds. Um, you know, they start coming from a place of blaming themselves too. They're like, what did I do? I, you know, I hear this one a lot from my guys is I gave everything like it, this is where the (laughs) miscommunication happens. We as women need to be touched, you know, like we need to be nurtured. We need to be told that, you know, we're loved and men for them work is the way they show that. 
but I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example in my own marriage. So for me, you know, I had everything. I had all the things. What I mm-hmm. needed was more love, more affection. I needed to be told I love you and I just in a really like look in my eyes and say, I love you instead of, hey, oh yeah, I love you. You know, I really needed to cultivate our relationship and be intimate mm-hmm. while he was thinking, oh, I'm working, I'm providing this is how I'm serving my family. You know, this is how I'm adding the value to my relationship. And so a lot of my guys are like, well, I gave everything. I gave everything. And, you know, in our minds, it's like, no, you didn't. You didn't even try. Mm -hmm. And so it's really us women trying to understand that men think so differently than us. You know, I have a friend who, and maybe this is a great reminder is, Women are like, are like spaghetti and men are like waffles, right? Mm-hmm. When men are, you know, they can't, you know, they're very linear. Mm-hmm. They think in boxes, like one thought at a time, whereas women can be everywhere and yeah. anywhere at a time. Right. And so that's how men think, you know, the woman, you know, he's thinking about his motorcycle and what's wrong with it. And she's thinking, oh my God, he's going to break up with me. Like mm-hmm. it had nothing to do with her. So it's just communication, you know, and giving them like helping them understand that we're so different. Yeah, that's true. And there are so many differences that are just inherently male and female traits, but there's also uh, what crosses that is love languages. And something you said just now kind of reminded me of this and there are five love languages. And if you haven't read that book yet, listeners, you definitely will want to do that before you start dating again, because I'll tell you what, it, it changes everything. If you know what your love language is and you figure out a way to kind of discern what the love language is of your partner or your Mm -hmm. potential partners, you will see that most people try to communicate in what is their primary love language, but they want to receive that way as well. And so in order to really be truly feeding each other what we need, we have to know this. So the five love languages are acts of service, physical touch, quality time, gifts, and words of affirmation. And I know like for me as an example, mine is quality time. So, you know, you could buy me all kinds of stuff. And if you're too busy, you know, to spend time with me doing something where we're not distracted with our phones or other people, I'm not, my my love bucket or whatever you want to call it, isn't going to be full, you know, it's just not. And the same is true for others. You know, if they're, if they need physical touch, that isn't just sex, that's hand holding. that's, you know, a pat on the back, that's hugs, that's a lot of things. So you've got to know what your partner's love language is so you can speak their love language, not just yours, because you're naturally going to speak yours and think, like you said, your male clients are maybe acts of service and they're at work, working hard, thinking they're loving you good. And you're at home going, I, you know, I'm quality time and you haven't been here all week <laughs> mm-hmm. and I, and I'm empty and I'm going to be looking to fill that bucket somehow. Yeah. And so, you know, these are just important things to be aware of as you're, you know, trying to understand the men in your life. And so first and foremost, I guess just the X, because that lessens so much of your stress, but going away from that, let's talk a little bit about maybe even just your male friends. Um, now this might not be a big part of your life, but you may have some male friends who are single and or married who are struggling with their relationships and you're that person for them that, you know, helps them understand women like you do for your male clients. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what do you think would be some important things for a woman who just wants to be a good friend to her male friends as they struggle through relationships? What is it that she should do, say, or be for them. So it's, you know, and this is really simple. And, you know, in working with men, I don't see a lot of men doing this. And what she could tell him is make a list of what you want. You know, men don't, when they're dating, they just kind of date. They don't, you know, women are like, I want this, 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 and this, right? And I'm not talking about like physical traits. I'm talking about like non-negotiables. So if he's having a really hard time and he keeps meeting the same women over and over, you know, have him say, hey, what do you, what do you think we write down? Like, what exactly is it that you want in a woman? You know, and get really clear because not, 
a lot of men do that. I found one man I interviewed. I have this show, um, it, you know, it's called Manifest TV. And I interviewed one of the guys I interviewed. He said, I wrote 25 things down. You know, I, he had gotten divorced. He's like, I wrote 25 down, things down, you know, and said, here, this is what I need. This is what I want. Non-negotiables, you know, how she manages her money, things like that. Like everything, right? Stuff we don't really talk mm-hmm. about. And he's like, I got like 24 of those 25 things. And now he found like the love of his life. And so for women and, you know, a woman giving advice to a man is really get clear on what you want instead of just dating. And, you know, because if you meet a woman, And you have this list in the back of your mind and she doesn't really isn't in alignment with what you want. Why would you continue dating her? Yeah. No, even if she's pretty, (laughs) right. It's not just, I mean, if that's what you want, great, go have sex, have fun, whatever. It's not, you know, but if you're really looking for a relationship, she can help him by, Hey, get some clarity and what kind of woman you want before you go out there. And, you know, and bars are not a place to find women. Like, you know, we're altered state, like, you know, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Yeah, exactly. And 25 is a lot. I mean, you may not even have five things on your list or 10 things, you know, the the number isn't important. It's the clarity that's important. And until you really stop and think, it's like wandering into a store, knowing you need to buy something and having no idea what you're looking for. Is it a food? Is it a grocery item? What is it? (laughs) So yeah, yeah, you got to know what you're looking for if you expect to find it. It's really common sense, but yet we don't really apply it a lot of times, I think, or a lot of people don't in dating. Um, so that, that I think that's helpful. And then, you know, really what it boils down to, I think, for most of the people listening, because let's be honest, they're going through a divorce and they're not happy about being alone. And they're probably already beginning to imagine themselves with someone else and what that might be like. And how's it going to look? How's it going to feel? Where am I going to find somebody? And I, I think before we jump into how to know what to expect from the men that you may or may date as you recover from your divorce. Let's stop for just a moment and talk about being okay, being alone. Mm. How important is that? It is one of the most important things you can do for yourself, for your soul, for your well-being. I mean, you know, we are creatures that need to have people around, but, you know, being alone allows you and you know being alone is scary i'm not you know i'm not going to lie like after my divorce i sat and i cried and i felt discomfort and i was afraid you know my there were weeks when i was completely alone because now my daughter who's 11 was with her father mm-hmm. you know and we had been a family we had been together like almost 18 years so having someone around 18 years and then all of a sudden the house being silent i was like oh my god like it made my heart so sad you know, and it was scary sitting there and, and being alone and just the, and I think it's not so much about being alone. I think it's so much about the thoughts that come in and the discomfort and the shadows that we have to face in ourselves. And that is what makes it so scary. But I'm here to tell you that, and I have done this myself is when you sit and you face those shadows that, that have been keeping you stuck in your relationship, you know, that help, you know, got, got you to where you are now and the woman that you don't want to be, or the woman, you know, you're meant to be when you really sit down and look at those things and do self-reflection and allow that discomfort to come in. The other side of it is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like you love to be alone because that's then your time to reflect, to really get clear on what you want in your life to take back that power and be like, you're not, no man is ever going to take that away from me again. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a boyfriend now and I'm always taking time to myself. I'm like, you know what? I need time to myself. And I go to the beach or, you know, I, I go meet a friend even, or I just go somewhere by myself. And it's beautiful Mm -hmm. because it now, instead of being something I was scared of, like, Oh my God, I'm alone with my thoughts. I'm alone with my feelings. This sucks. Now I'm like, oh my God, I need this time because I'm going to go insane, (laughs) you know? So being alone is if you can sit, you know, and try just for like 10 minutes at a time. Sometimes now I spend whole days by myself and I'm just like loving it, (laughs) you know, and don't Girl, you don't have to tell me. I'm the exact same person. (laughs) You just described me. And my boyfriend's like, what? Why do you want to do that? (laughs) 
Yeah, no, I totally get that. And and I think, in fact, that you should be so uncomfortable, so comfortable being alone yes. that you, even when you meet somebody that checks every single box on your list mm-hmm. and you're head over heels in love with and want to spend the rest of your life with, you still miss your alone time and want your alone time. And that takes some time. It is an adjustment. I think, you know, you kind of, the way you described, you know, facing those shadows, I think is something I want to just spend a few more minutes on because I think there is so much fear about being alone for so many women. And I understand it. And at the same time, I think a lot of, of them don't understand it. They just go with it because it's how they feel. It's how they've always felt. Maybe it's not how they've always felt, but it's how they feel now. Mm-hmm. What What is it that we're so afraid of? I think it's, it's those, it's those old, it's the old beliefs of, you know, of, I am not enough of, I am not worthy. You know, it's, it's those, that conditioning that, you know, what, and we all have it. I don't care if you're Gandhi, you know, we all have that conditioning is, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm, I'm too fat. I'm too thin. It's all of those old conditioning beliefs that start to come up when you're alone, when you're alone with your thoughts, with how you feel, whatever it may be, you know, maybe some trauma happened when you were a child, you know, and that is, you know, there, you know, I've worked with, I used to work with women with eating disorders and a lot of them had been sexually verbally abused as kids, you know, but in order to heal from that, sometimes you have to tap into those stories. And that is really scary. I mean, that was really heavy work. Like that mm-hmm. was, it was a lot of healing happening. But I mean, you're going into the depths of these rooms that you haven't opened in a really long time. And mm-hmm. in order for the light to hit, you need to open those those rooms and mm-hmm. really in whatever way, you know, whether you're going to coach, you know, like, like you, you do, or whether you're going to healer or whoever it is, is really allow those to come up. And that's what we're afraid of. We're afraid of ourselves and our stories as children and, and the feelings of inadequacy and inferiority, you know, yeah. that that's what we're afraid of. And that's what, you know, I have this incredible partner that I attracted and shit comes up, you know, when you're, okay, so you're single, you're looking for the new guy. I found the new guy. Now, like there's triggers from old relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's stuff is always coming up. But if you know how to really self-reflect and really talk to your partner, you know, sorry, this is going, then you're comfortable with those shadows and the stories coming up because you've done the work alone on your own and you know how to navigate that situation. So it's not only helpful for you, it's helpful for the relationship that you're wanting to be in because you're going to show up as this incredible woman, right? Mm -hmm. Even more incredible than you were in your last relationship. And it's like, oh my God, who, who am I? Like, I'm incredible. I'm amazing. (laughs) Yeah. And you're, and you're going to know who you are because that's, I honestly, I I shared a meme the other day with, with a post on social media. And the meme was a picture of a woman looking in a mirror, but the reflection was very dark. You couldn't see her very well. And the concept was that, you know, sometimes we are, when we're going through a divorce, or recovering from a divorce, we are looking in the mirror or maybe we're trying not to look in the mirror (laughs) and we're just not seeing ourselves clearly. We don't know who we are. We've completely lost ourselves in that relationship. And it's a little fearful to look in that mirror and to have anyone else or even ourselves shine a light on that and try to understand who you are and why you do the things you do. What makes you tick? What do you need? What do you want? And so I'm going to flash back to something you said earlier, which was about asking men to make a list of what it is they're looking for. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of preparation for dating for women. I offer that recommendation a lot. And I think that list has to do two things. One, you have to be very honest about what you needed in your former relationship that you were not getting. Yeah. You, you know, this isn't, you know, a, you know, yeah. a, a genie, a, bo- a genie in a bottle, you know, you're not, you're not going to necessarily get everything on this list or maybe 
you will. But you have to really dive deep and figure out what do I need? What do I just want? And why? And then the other part of that is to really look at what you would have to be or do as a woman to attract that. Yeah. You know, it's easy enough to say, well, I want a guy who, you know, can put his phone away and pay attention to me for hours at a time and without me having to bug him to do that. You know, maybe that's your thing with quality time. Um, so what do I have to do to attract a guy like that? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and, and, and that takes some thought and that takes alone time. And so that's how I ended up there with this is just thinking about, um, you know, just taking that time to get okay with yourself, mm-hmm. with being alone, to enjoy silence and solitude. And that does take some time, especially if you had a busy family life and you literally never had time to breathe or think. And all of a sudden, you've got endless hours at home with no one else there. It can be very scary. It can be very depressing if you allow it to be. And and you do need to grieve some of that loss, but at the same time, then, you know, explore, allow that silence and solitude to allow you to explore what it is that you want to be different going forward. And then, Once you do start dating, whether that's on an app or if it's somebody, you know, a friend introduction or maybe it's somebody from high school that you just got reacquainted with, you know, all the different ways that we might connect with somebody after a divorce. It is just practice, right? I mean... uh, Every day I'm talking to women who are, you know... (sighs) Dating is so depressing. (laughs) You know, where are all the good men? And it is, it can be exhausting, but I think a lot of that exhaustion and frustration has to do with expectations and maybe that idea that, will this guy be the one? Rather than just enjoying a vibrant and active social life, that may or may not result in a one-on-one connection with a man and just being okay with that. Um, Just from a perspective of the man on the other side of this, as a woman begins to date, how would maybe the men that you work with like to see women approach dating? It's interesting. I just had a conversation with one of my friends about this. Um, and it, it goes to online dating because, you know, obviously like with COVID and everything, mm-hmm. um, it's had to go that way. But um, in their profiles, I got, a lot of men are turned off because women are passive aggressive. Is I'm, I'm just quoting what they're saying. Yes. Women are passive aggressive in their profiles, you know, and they'll say, and I wish I could remember what he said. Um, oh, I want to keep him on, on his toes was a big one, right? And he was like, I don't want someone who's going to keep me on my toes. I want someone who I could connect with and have good conversations with. You know, these men are high quality men. They're, you know, they, they're entrepreneurial men who have most of their shit together. They're just looking for that quality woman. And mm. it's like, I don't want to be, keep guessing. I want her to tell me what she wants so I can give it to her so I can know how to love her better. So I can know how to please her better, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just little comments like that, that are on profiles that are passive aggressive. They're like, I just want a chill woman who tells the truth, who, who says what she likes on her profile. So I'm not trying to like read between the lines, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, Guys just need, you know, to see apparently women that are truthful and in their profile too, you know, not like, hey, I'm looking for a Libra who's like six feet tall and, you know, that's great and all, you know, who makes a lot of money, you know, and and here's another thing I got is, well, are you making a lot of money as a woman? Like, you know, (laughs) it's like, well, like you were saying earlier, which was huge is like, you make a list, how much of that on your list are you do you reflect that person too? Because that's what you're going to attract. If you make your list and you can't manage your money well, you're going to attract someone who doesn't manage their money well. So make sure all those things on your list are things that you are as well, right? As a woman and, and vice versa. And that's what I also teach my guys. It's like, okay, here's your list, but 
uh, I need you to like go through and see which one of these you are too. And it's like, Oh, <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but that's just good practice because if you, if this relationship is going to work, your focus needs to be on what you're giving, not what you're giving from yeah. the relationship. And I think both men and women need to approach it that way. And I think if you are approaching dating that way, you're not going to be passive aggressive. You're not going to be, you know, offering this energy that is, you know, what do you have to, to, you know, draw me to you? What do you have to offer? You know, it's, yeah. here's who I am in my authenticity. Exactly. Uh, and here's what I'm looking to attract, you know, and that, I think that's how it should be, you know, for both yeah. men and women. But it's, it's interesting to hear the male perspective of what they're seeing online as well, you know, because mostly what I hear is women, you know, all these guys, they say they want to be in a relationship, but you go out on one date and it's quite obvious that that's not what they want. <laughs> Yeah, and well, so yeah, and, and that just depends a lot on you know. It really doesn't matter what platform you're on. There are going to be men that are there for those reasons, and yeah. women too, frankly. But yeah, and that's that, that's okay. Another thing too is to think about is, you know, I'm trying I'm trying on my side working with men, but you got to remember that, like we, like you had mentioned um, earlier, is these men that are out there are the men that you've like men, like the one you divorced who are Mm -hmm. looking for just attention and affection. Mm -hmm. Right. So Mm -hmm. keep that in mind. I'm trying to get them to really focus on themselves first before they go out and just fuck around again, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And And maybe they don't even realize that maybe they really actually do want a relationship. That's why they're checking that box. Yeah. But, but they're just so emotionally unintelligent Mm -hmm. that they don't, understand that they're they're repelling that (laughs) you know so there's some I think understanding and that's not to say that you as a woman need to train a man on these things you know that's that that's to say you need to be aware that that's not somebody for you if they're not interested in growing as a person and learning to you know fix what's broken in them first so yeah yeah well, and, and, and really just, I, I guess that's more or less all that I had to cover today. I wanted each woman listening today to know how to uh, handle situations with her ex, with her friends, and with potential future mates from a male perspective. But as we close, uh, I do want to just kind of get an idea from you of your why for being here today. When you thought about having this conversation, what did you want to convey most of all? So, you know, as to women, to the women out there, um, is, you know, you're, you, you're working with women who have, who are going through the divorce and, you know, speaking as a woman who went through, you know, a divorce is really focusing on you first. And I know this was a lot of our, but my intention was to come to you from a place of being where you are and, you know, I did, I'm going to tell you, I went and dated, like, you know, as soon as I was divorced, I went out and dated and oh my God, the guys I attracted, I was like, okay, I'm done. (laughs) I need to go inward first. And I think, you know, if you want to go mess around and get attention and affection, like that's fine. There is no judgments whatsoever, but once you're ready, really go inward and focus on you. So you become the best version of yourself so that you're attracting a man who's the best version of himself. Because imagine if we all did that, say all of us who are getting divorced, you know, the divorce rate is crazy high right now, you know, mm-hmm. because of COVID we've had to be with these people. You know, We're like, Oh my yeah. God, who are you? And I don't like you anymore. Yeah. You know, imagine a world where, you know, you get in a divorce or you get out of a relationship and you really self-reflect on what you want, who you are, take that power back we would have such better relationships, more loving, long lasting relationships. And so my intention was to help you see where men are coming from, you know, and and they're so simple in their simplicity. It's beautiful, Mm -hmm. Uh, but really work on you because once you do, you're going to attract that partner that you're wanting and it goes both ways you know, yes. you do the work, heal, you know, you, you're here for them. You coach them. I'm so grateful to you. Cause I'm on the other side doing the other, <laughs> you know, and we're yeah. going to bring this beautiful healed people together that are going to know how to communicate even on the tough, toughest subjects. 
mm-hmm. money, sex, like boundaries, things like that. So that was my my intention for coming here today. And, and I'm honored that you would have me. And I'm so happy I got to share a different yeah. point of view. <laughs> well, hey, thank you. You're, you're the reason for this. You reached out on social media and we connected. And I appreciate that. And I think it, I, I just really appreciate you being here and sharing from that perspective, because what I think is an easy takeaway for anybody listening today is simply that you get what you give and you already know you don't want what you had before. So you take some time to find what you need and then go find it and don't repeat the mistakes of the past and just stay in that same cycle. And I think that that is the number one thing that I wanted to, number one reason I wanted to have this conversation today, because I see women over and over again, jump from one relationship to another, or even if they take some time, they still jump right back into that same cycle in their new relationship because they didn't do the self-exploration to really understand how not to. So thank you for offering that perspective on men and helping women who are looking for a man understand what it is that they need to do and to be to find the one that they want forever. Mm -hmm. And ladies, you're listening here today because this is a subject that matters to you. And I really appreciate that you've taken some time out of your schedule to give this a listen and to explore this. It's hard work, but it is worth it. And I just am thankful for you taking the time to invest in yourself and to really rediscover what it is that you're looking for in your future. So thank you again for being here and we'll see you again next week for more help as you divorce and hope as you are starting over stronger. Thank you.